And therefore, of course, now we have the third uh, year's conference. And what do you think they devised for themselves? This is not me. This is what they devised for themselves. Can you have the third and last AV that they just made? So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this all might seem extremely frivolous, but there is a certain method in the madness. It is to shame people to, and make them think that, look, think back on your glory. Take targets which are really tough. Everybody commits to it because variable pay also depends on it. And the tough targets are nothing else but what Eminem wanted to get out of it. And uh, once you're ready, let them go out and fight for their earlier uh, pride of place in the industry. And then you also celebrate and have a good time. Now, these are the results, this is how it's happened. What I'd like to share now is my personal view of seven or eight or 10 things which I think, uh, I believe, caused the success. To my mind, this is the most important. Uh, I think, first of all, the industry, the fundamentals are sound. I've talked about why the tractor industry is attractive. The, so the industry fundament. Had we gone into something which was a dying industry, obviously it would have been different. There was good potential in the contribution system costs and CTO relationship. I believe that every industry has a certain formula of costs and profit. And if you can understand that, you can then plan your business very well. In this particular case, the margins and all and costs were excellent. They were industry leading figures. What they had gone and really messed up was their use of capital. The capital turnover ratio because of the outstanding. And that is something that we are very good at correcting, and we did. The second was a knowledge and capability fit between FES and PTN. Obviously, it was very easy because we know the tractor industry for a long time. The challenges arise, can arise, when you get into a business of which you do not know much. It helped a lot. The early and very absolute clarity about who is in charge. Because there should not be ambiguity. And again, choice between retaining one or two. They had two people, uh, appointment of a managing director, board composition, and the key account function, the control functions, accounting, sourcing, and HR policies. We said they aligned up front. So early absolute clarity. Early wide and very formal artic uh, articulation of the integration strategy. We went out on a limb saying this is what we're going to do. And as I said, it helps a lot if the president of the business says, this is what we're going to do, this is what I'm going to do, this is what we're all going to achieve. Because it's very tough to change it after that. So you stick to a, a, you know, a, a formula, a point that you have, uh, uh, an approach that you have articulated. Um, again, I won't give you details. Um, we, gave, we gave people what they wanted. What did they want? Their salaries were low, we increased them. Reassurance. That we are here for the long term, your jobs are safe, and we plan to grow. Emotional satisfaction, pride in Swaraj, you've seen how we kind of developed that. And it gave Eminem what we wanted, which was good governance, good values, and business performance. And uh, we preserved the PTL positive DNA, which was speed, they worked very fast, much faster than Eminem. If Eminem had to get rid of 10% executive, believe me, we would take six months. Lot of committees, you know, corporates and all kinds of frankly boring stuff. Over there, the entire process completed in one month. So what I'm trying to say, there are strengths, and you know, an acquiring company must not believe that they know it all. Clarity in operational priorities, first health, then growth. Again, I think it was important. Aligning organizational objectives and individual KIAs to an acquisition optimistic business case. This is what we paid to get this. Gentlemen, if we get this, everybody's going to be happy. So that was what we did. Uh, the rigor of reviews. Using the APEX committee headed by Anand. I said we were going to have an APEX committee. 
We still got to have Anand, Bharat Doshi, uh, Rajiv Dubey. Uh, I will be there, and you know the chief executive from there. And we are going to meet, you know, every two months. We had exactly two meetings, but putting Anand up there because it helped a lot because you know it's going over there. So what I'm saying, you need to kick it off and then maintain a kind of ser uh, seriousness and seniority and importance to this. Avoiding blind application of we know best, preserving and using the strengths of PTL, PM. I think this was very, very important. I won't spend too much time because I, on each one of them because I think they're pretty straightforward. I'm trying to keep some time for questions. Intensive and wide communication. You cannot communicate enough. You cannot, cannot uh, communicate too much. And uh, I think it is not only this horrible kind of thing you know, let us meet and oh, be joyful, we are all going to do this. You need to have the channels of what's actually happening with the people. Uh, it's not just the senior management team. What's happening inside, what's happening down the line. And you need to have scope for them to share their genuine feelings. And that's what I call track one and track two. Building on Swaraj pride. Pride is a wonderful emotion. And if you go north of the Vindyas, it is the emotion, right? So it's very important to build on pride uh, in the company. And you know, companies are successful. Sometimes things happen which are unfortunate. How do you build back that pride? And creating a win-win situation for everybody. They got what they wanted, we got what we wanted. Thank you very much, I'm open for questions. I, uh, I am very happy to answer any question. Uh, <clears throat> since I retire in uh, five weeks' time, I can also be indiscreet. So, <laughs> no, but I'm quite happy to answer any question. Yes, please. In, across all m and subsidies, does the culture percolate? Yeah, first of all, uh, I don't think it does. OK? Um, yeah. So you don't have a common culture? Uh, what I'm trying to say is I would be I would be, frankly, deluding myself if I said that the culture in Stokes, UK, or Schoenerweiss in Germany, is the same as uh, Swaraj Division or FES in Chandigarh, which itself is rather different from the Mahindra uh, Division factory in Nagpur. There are differences, and thank God. Otherwise, we'd all be clones. But I think when we talk about culture, if we are talking about certain fundamentals like values, like values, like corporate governance. Uh, I think uh, they are there in most places, and where they are not, it's very important for us to inculcate those. Where, it's, where it is, uh, I think, important for the business, that subsidiary, or the acting, whatever, for systems to be commonized, like we did over here for HR accounts control systems, I think it's important. But I also hope that in our subsidiaries, we are able to use the strengths of those subsidiaries and preserve those elements of the DNA or culture, these are sometimes synonymous words, um, which are uh, important and strengths. And frankly, I think there are some things that m and has learned from PTL. So I mean, that's the, that's the answer I can. Uh, Swaraj did not have drugs business, it had uh, shareholdings in Swaraj Mazda, which the previous management, for reasons known to themselves, uh, sold, leaving a minority shareholding with a Japanese partner. Uh, and of course, the managing director of PTL also became managing director over there after selling the shares. So you know, there's all interesting things that happened. But uh, we, have, uh, we had those, so it was an investment. We have now subsequently sold those shares also to the Japanese partner because we had no further interest in it. And second question, like in this acquisition, there might have been towns and cities where dealership for M&M and, and Swaraj both were there. Yeah. So what did you do about that? Yeah, we were upfront about one thing. We said, and that's what I was talking, back end, front end. It's like this, we said the back end, which means HR accounts, finance, manufacturing, sourcing we will integrate to get economies of scale. The front end will be kept separate. The customer could not care less where the tractor is produced. He wants a good tractor at the right price. So after all, there were people who wanted a Swaraj tractor, even though Mahindra was available. For us to say, no, we are going to cut that, is no. 
So we were upfront. Dealers, all of you will continue. Salesforce, all of you will continue. The Swaraj brand is there with us forever, committed. It's a very strong brand. It's part of what we pay for. Uh, and that was, first of all, sensible. Because one of the things that I have found, and you know, I was earlier involved in certain uh, mergers, Lipton's with Brook Bond, Bond's with Hindustan Levers, 12 joint ventures in China to be merged. If you merge it imprudently and too quickly, you will lose three things. You will lose people's morale, okay? You will lose sales. Because, you know, suppose I go and tell everybody, you can't get Swaraj now, you can only get Mahindra. It's like the guy, you know, who said you can buy a car so long it's colored black. And people will say, thank you very much, we don't. And the third thing is, you will lose money. Because one of the things is, if you too closely integrate, suppose I had integrated this, those sales guys would have said, to hell with all those outstandings. You see, there are always things which are under the carpet. Uh, you know, and uh, if you say, okay, remove the carpet, then all the negatives are in your balance sheet now. Instead, you tell them, look, you have to manage the room, then make sure Dhirase is safai karding, you know, so that what they have put under the carpet will not see. So, uh, therefore, to a short answer is the sales system, the brand, and the dealer network is going to continue and will not be merged in the foreseeable future. We were upfront, and that's also, they, they paid us money, right? They returned the money. If you had said you were gone, they'll say thank you, your money is gone. Yeah?